Hello everyone, this is Mitter and Nuts, and today we'll be continuing the OAS Top 10 2021 video series. Today we'll be looking at the fifth risk, that is security misconfiguration. I've done the previous four risks earlier in the previous videos, y'all can go and check that out. So first, let's look at the 2017 versus 2021 table. We can see over here that A04 XML external entities and A06 security misconfiguration is now merged to A05 security misconfiguration in 2021. So XML external entity, it's, it's no more a separate entity or like, you know, separate risk, but it's merged to security misconfiguration over here. So in order to understand what security misconfiguration is, we need to understand the security configuration part. So basically security configuration is nothing but a certain number of configuration items which are implemented on the server's application or devices like network devices or something. So basically it's as good as you know removing a default username or password and adding some maybe password policy or something and also implementing the right security controls protocols using the right uh, uh you know certificate or something of that sort so these things are for security configuration obviously there will be some configuration like how the application works starts how the network is rooted or something of that sort but then later on, uh, there is security configuration, which is specific to security only. So this is what, uh, you know, security configuration means basically. And then later on, the misconfiguration of these things uh, will actually lead to further risk and so on. So let's look at that first. So we do have no hardening followed. So basically hardening is nothing but a server or application hardening is done when uh, you know it's basically a document or set of uh, checklist or something like you know for all the servers these things have to be followed like you know remove the default username and password remove this remove that add this make a group over here which has like strict permissions and make a group which has only two uh, you know root or admin users and the file permissions are set properly and so on like a lot of things will be present over there which is obviously re uh, you know reviewed annually and later on those things are implemented because um, you know the technology and everything keeps changing rapidly so if that does not follow itself, like you bring a server and connect it and you start running your application and everything over there. So that's one thing like, you know, you, there is no hardening followed in that particular organization or something. So that's why this thing comes first over here. This is like one of the main root cause of security misconfiguration. Then comes using vendor default user event passwords. Obviously this will come or everything will come under hardening or something. So it's as good as whenever there is a device purchased from a vendor or there's a web application or application purchased. So basically the, the vendor will have a default username and password created for an account so that the user, whoever tries to access the device or application first gets access to it. Because if there is no default username and password provided, the user will not be able to access it. Correct. So they provide some username and passwords as good as admin, admin or admin password or root, root and so on. So once they recommend that once the users set up different other users, so you have to actually change the password of this uh, default or admin user, which is there or, you know, rename or something of that sort. So that is not done and that is still present. And then later on, that's another misconfiguration because that is very easily guessable like admin admin and you may get access to that particular application. So this is one another misconfiguration which is present. Then there is another thing that is unnecessary ports are open externally. So basically, whenever there is a server, there are certain ports which are not recommended to be opened externally. Okay, so like it can be present locally on the server. Maybe there's a, some a database or something listening uh, and the web application is running on the same server itself. So the database port has uh, like it's uh, recommended to be open locally itself 
and not externally because the application also will be present in the same server. Obviously, if the database server is a different one, so it's an entire different story, but still. And then there are certain things like SSH port, which are open externally on the public facing side, like, you know, the firewall also has that thing opened up and because some users want to connect to it without connecting, connecting to the, uh, you know, the local network or the inter uh, sorry, internal network or something of that sort. And then comes uh, error messages displaying sensitive information. So many a times there are some stack trace which, uh, you know, comes out and it may reveal certain things like uh, SQL injections can be present over there. Like, you know, we can see the command over there. And also there are certain uh, like .NET version number or something will be disclosed. And that will actually help uh, the attacker or somebody to get the version number and to check if that is an outdated version which is used and then they can plan their attacks or something uh, based on that and also if they get some sensitive information uh, they'll collect it or something and then later on plan something further so obviously this is another thing of misconfiguration over here then comes some security features are disabled so basically whenever there is a product which is purchased there are certain security features which are present, but the users are not using them. So for example, there is a application which is procured and that particular application will have a you know, set of TLS versions which are used. Obviously the users or the server application, whoever are using them, so they actually use TLS over there. But the thing is they don't use TLS 1.2 and 1.3. They just be like, okay, uh, whatever came default that is 1.0 and 1.1 will be using that and will not use 1.2 and 1.3, which are more secure. So that is one prime example of not using security features, which are already present. So they are disabled or something. Then comes appropriate security headers are not set. So in application, there are some security headers, which the server will tell the client to set. Client does nothing but your web browser to set some things like especially on the cookies or the session IDs or something which are present. So they are present in cookies, correct? So for example, there is a security header. Those that security header, if the server will tell the client to set it, so the web browser will set that in the cookie uh, session ID, whichever, uh, you know, things are present over there. And once that secure uh, header is set, then the web browser, will only send that cookie uh, whichever that session id you know that secure uh, header is set over there it will send that only if the connection is https that is secure connection so if the connection is http which attackers may use to downgrade and you know intercept the traffic in plain text and actually get the session id or something the browser will not send uh, the session id the cookie basically so that's where uh, if these things are not set the secure header is not set then the browser will actually send it in plain text and maybe an attacker will get hold of the session id or something and can access the application and then later on uh, there is insecure permission set so basically there is on the server maybe there are set of people working on the same server obviously different teams and so on there are some configuration files which have like hard coded passwords or something. And then those password files are like visible to everybody or writable by everyone on the server. So anybody can tamper it or something. So that is one another thing of insecure permission set. So basically these are the examples of uh, security misconfiguration. Obviously there are some more examples but uh this is what uh, like you know i can find like uh, most common thing obviously the list goes on for this so let's look at few of the examples over here so first thing is we'll look at a uh, dummy network monitoring application server which is present and to note that this particular application is actually a vendor software over here uh, it is you know provided by some vendor you will be this particular organization has purchased it or something and the vendor software in order to log in into their portal so they have a web application portal over there so in order to uh, log in over there the username 
uh, and password default password is admin and pass as we can see over here so obviously this is for the first login whenever the users try to log in and then later they change the username or password and uh, they add other users or something of that sort so this organization has kept it as it is because as we can see it's security misconfiguration they have not changed the default username and password over here so there is a user allies uh, over here who tries to log in into this uh, application portal and uh, she does not have access to it she's not authorized to use it as well she just tries the username and password that is allies and password just you know just to see if she gets access or something and then later on the server obviously checks for correct credentials and it says invalid credentials so allies does not get access to it then ally sees that this network monitoring tool this is which is vendor provided she'll try to, she tries to go on google and tries to search for default username and password for this particular tool and she actually finds a default username and password that is admin and pass on google because that's uh vendors usually do have it listed on their forums and pages as well what are the default credentials and so on so then later on she gets that admin and pass uh, from you know on checking on google and then later on she tries to enter that sorry she tries to enter that and later on obviously she gets access as the admin user server response with admin user access granted so that's how the security misconfiguration over here lets allies user who does not have access over here in this particular application gets access to it so let's look at this in a much better way we do have this web application present over here dummy web application obviously please ignore the graphics and uh, allies tries to enter allies and password but she gets an invalid credentials so from the server and the later on she goes on google as discussed earlier and then later on uh she is like okay i get i got the admin uh, username and i got the password as pass i'll try to enter that and then she gets access to this particular application over here which is uh you know as admin user so as admin user first thing is we can perform multiple additional you know privileged requests or something like we can see over here there's a run script so maybe we can run scripts on the server or something we can add delete users so allies maybe she doesn't want to use this account anymore she'll just add a user account for herself and she can even restart the server which can cause downtime or something and so on and she can obviously monitor the network traffic sensitive information and something of that sort obviously this is just a dummy example and um, yeah so this is what misconfiguration is uh, for this uh, you know default username and password so next thing is let's look at another example over here where unnecessary ports are opened externally so one thing is that this particular port over here that is uh, this server is actually running uh, two ports it's running a web application on port 443 tcp and it's running ssh service on port 22 tcp so basically this is done why because there's a user allies over here obviously that 443 is having the web application and that's the intended way to run and this allies user who is actually a root user of this particular server she's an uh, you know authorized user and she does the deployment of applications she checks the performance cpu usage and so on she tries to create some scripts and everything on the server that's a daily job to do so this web application over here is obviously behind a firewall but this port 22 is actually whitelisted on the firewall as well so that externally as well from anywhere on the internet if we try to log into the server if we have the ip or something uh, this user allies can log in over here so this is done because allies didn't want to always go to you know the office or something to connect to their internal network and she wants to do it from anywhere outside obviously this uh, organization is like small they don't have vpn or something just consider for this example 
and then Alice tries to log in over here because she's authorized. She the credentials are like uh, the username is root because she wants to log into the server as root user, and then the password is admin. That's the password she chose, like she chooses to keep. And later on, uh, she's like, okay, this is the credential because I'll not forget it. So she tries to log in over here and she gets access to it. She does a daily task and so on. Okay, so now next thing, there's another user, Dart over here, who's not part, not even part of the organization. He sees that, okay, this web application, which I use, he's a user over here, like he tries to check this application and he's like okay i can see this application which is present externally i can read the contents of it and i also noticed that the port 22 is open on the server and that is running ssh that is secure shell so basically what happens is this particular user that he will try to log in into this ssh first He'll be like, okay, let me just try and see if I can log in over here. So he enters the username root and the password root over here. So obviously this is incorrect, right? Because the username root has a password admin as we saw earlier in the case of allies. And then later on the server will respond with invalid login. So Dart is like, okay, there is SSH present. Okay, and root user he selected because it's most likely to be present on the server. So that's why he's like, okay, I'll just keep the username as root only and I'll change the password. I'll just get a, you know, password list or something and I'll perform a dictionary attack over here on this SSH. The misconfiguration over here is that the TCP port 22, sorry, yeah, 22 is present uh, externally. It's open externally for external access. That is one thing. And obviously there are some other things which we'll look into in a while. Then later on, Dart is like, okay, he's using that password list and everything. And he suddenly comes to this combination that is root with the password admin. So as we saw earlier, the, that's the same credits what uh, Alice user is using. And once he does that, he gets uh, authentication successful and he gets like, you know, SSL, SSH connection established and he can actually execute commands on the server as a user root over there and do multiple things. So that's how he gets access to the server. So few things, obviously that port 22 is open externally. Second thing is Alice's credential username is root. That is the second thing, which is very clear, like, you know, the root user exactly, and it's not Alice or something. And then the third thing is that the password over there itself is simple. Obviously there's no pol password policy or something. It's a very simple password present. And then the fourth thing is, <coughs> sorry. The fourth thing is that this particular server does not have any, um, you know, login attempts or something uh, present over there. Like fail to ban would be ideally present to ban the particular IPs if there are multiple IPs who are trying to log it in the servers to avoid this brute force or anything. So there's no security mechanism present over there. But uh, the main thing obviously over here is that the port and, you know, that's how this DAR tries to uh do a dictionary attack and get the get the access of the root user so this was it for security misconfiguration uh just a high level overview over here uh, if you guys uh, like the video please do give a thumbs up if you guys have any queries please do ask me in the comment section below and do subscribe for more upcoming videos thank you and have a nice day take care